You know, my perspective on this is pretty simple. It's from the perspective of a trial practitioner. You know, we deal with issues like evidence. Uh, we all have to think about the ramifications of this ruling. I mean, the most obvious impact is the chaos that this type of ruling would cause our criminal justice system. Imagine every state's attorney's office in the state of Illinois being required to simultaneously try 156 death row cases. These are the biggest cases, the ones that require the most manpower, the most time, the most effort, and they have obviously the most at stake. Uh, I don't know any state's attorney's office that would be able to handle the type of load that this ruling would, would place on all of these individuals. And then we have the issue of evidence. Just as we're here at the ceramic shop, you can see it's no longer behind me because it's been destroyed, it's been damaged, and it's been deteriorated. The evidence in these cases is going to be exactly the same. The evidence of a 30 or 40 year old murder is going to be no different than this ceramic shop. Some of it's going to be destroyed, some of it's going to be deteriorated, and some of it won't be able to be found. Which leaves us with one concern. Does this ruling create the possibility that the worst of the worst murderers in Illinois would have a chance to go free? Not because of a violation of their constitutional rights, but simply because this ruling would re require evidence that is 40, 30, 40, 20 years old to become absolutely relevant and crucial to the conviction of these individuals. It's a very, very, very risky opinion, and I ask the voters to truly consider the, I guess, the mental process that may have gone into uh, deciding to make this kind of ruling and then decide what they should do on the retention of Justice Kilbride.